everyone, it's your man out of Japan, Jay Contra, and it's been about three years since I left the country of Japan, and I left behind one of my favorite store chains ever to visit, which is Book Off. If you've never heard of Book Off before, it's probably one of the larger retail chains in Japan, and it's probably the biggest second-hand used goods store in Japan. They have used books, used manga, and perhaps most importantly, used video games. You can find all kinds of video games at a book off, depending on the one that you visit. In the larger cities, when you visit a book off, you'll find everything from Famicom to Super Famicom up to the most recent titles. And you can actually get these more recent games at a very good price and even some of the older games will be at very competitive prices because it's been so long since i've been to a book off i was getting kind of antsy i was thinking like oh man i wonder what kind of great deals i could find in these japanese used game shops well it turns out there are actually a bunch of book offs in the united states while they're mostly over on the west coast there is actually a book off right in the middle of Manhattan in New York City, actually about a block or two away from Times Square. So I went to New York for many reasons, but one of them was to visit the book off in Manhattan. And I wanna tell you about what I found there. First, what was amazing was that they basically just took the shelves that you were used to in book off, I bet they are the exact same shelves, and they just put them on a floor space in the middle of Manhattan. It is the spinning image of a book off, except perhaps much, a much larger floor space. That's really the only difference that you'll see. Although you will find American books there, of course. Down in the basement of the book off in Manhattan, you will find both Japanese books and Japanese language manga. Now, I found their selection a little lacking. They didn't have the titles that I was looking for, but the fact that they had anything at all is amazing, considering that buying used manga off of eBay in the United States from Japan uh, can be a pretty pricey endeavor given shipping. But what about the games? Well, not only did the New York City location of Book Off have Japanese games, and I'll get into the specifics there in a minute, but they also had a wide range of American games. And I think that's really what you wanna look at when you're going to this Book Off because they're not going to have a lot of Japanese games simply because there's probably an, uh, uh, not a lot of uh, Japanese retro gamers bringing their collection from Japan and then wanting to offload them at the book off in New York City. So these are perhaps more luxury items. But I found their selection of American games really quite interesting. Looking at their consoles, they had an Xbox One X that they had priced at $240, which is about $20 cheaper than you'd find it at GameStop. Additionally, they had an American N64, a bunch of American N64s actually, that they were selling for $160, yet that was about $20 more than you would find it on eBay for a comparable system. Now, of course, the, the, the attraction is that, well, if you're living in New York, if you have a problem with your N64, you can just take it back to them and either switch it out for a new one or get a refund, which is going to be much easier uh, a process than you will find when you're buying a system off of eBay. But then you look at the GameCubes and those are $160 at Book Off versus the $170 on eBay. And the real twist is that they had an N64, what I think was in the box, for the same price as a loose console. So I don't know how they're pricing their consoles and particularly how they price their Japanese games. I don't know if there's like some kind of game pricing professional that they consult or they just go on eBay and they just type in the games and try and, you know, go 10 or $20 up or 10 or $20 down. I have no idea how they're doing this. Their prices are all over the place. And that's what we're about to get into right now. They had Dreamcasts for $140 versus the about $100 you would find it on eBay. And they also had Xbox 360s for about 50 bucks a piece, depending on the model you wanted to buy. But can this American book off compare in price to buying the same retro game in Japan? Let's do some quick comparison shopping. Here in their Japanese retro game showcase, they have a copy of Link to the Past for $40, which is four or five times more 
than the $7 you can find it for on Sunugaya, although I'm not counting shipping in that price. Similarly, our type is $40. However, I can go online and get a complete inbox copy off of Sunugaya for $27. And then you get to Endless Duel, which is an amazing Super Famicom Gundam Wing game, which is $79 here in the case, but I can get the same cartridge on Sudugaya for $13 plus shipping. So at least for their Japanese retro games, you're not going to get a great deal there. But I was amazed, and I mean actually amazed, by the American GameCube games that they had just out on the shelf. For example, there was a copy of Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2, which I've been looking for, that they had at $20, which is about the same that you'd find it on eBay. And the only reason I didn't buy it is simply because the spine had faded from the years, probably, of being underneath the UV lights that they have. But what I think I'm really interested in is the games that they have in their big showcase at the front of the shop. They have a complete inbox copy of Diddy Kong Racing for $90, which is actually not that bad considering on eBay, it's about $85 shipped. They also had a complete inbox copy of Mega Man 5 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and they wanted $540, which is a bit pricier than the $450 that you could probably get it for on eBay. They also had a used 3DS copy of Dragon Quest VIII, which they wanted $130 for, but I went on eBay and I could find it sealed, so a new copy of Dragon Quest VIII for the same system in English for $130, so I don't know how they priced that there. Speaking of GameCube, when we go to Luigi's Mansion, they had it priced at $80, which is a lot more than the $55 that I could find it on eBay. But on the flip side of that, look at Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo. Here it's priced at $185 versus the $235 that I could find it cheapest for on eBay. And then you get to Cubivore, which is at a cool $550 here in Book Off. Whereas on eBay, it floats from anywhere from $500 to $600. But the advantage with this Book Off is at least you get to see the object right in front of you as opposed to eBay where not only could the pictures be playing tricks on you, but I'll be honest, when I've bought a lot of, say, GameCube games or PlayStation 2 games, you know, the games that come in that sort of DVD case, I've had a lot of games get damaged in shipping just because of poor packing. So the advantage for Book Off is that, well, if the game gets damaged, it's going to be your fault taking it home. It's not going to be Book Off's fault. The truly interesting game, the most interesting game that I found at an interesting store in Manhattan... It wasn't the Japanese games there. It wasn't the cool consoles that they had in the showcases. It was a $1,500 copy of Shrek Super Party. Now, this is normally a $20 game for the American Xbox, but the copy they have here is very special because it includes a watch. I don't know how you feel about the movie Shrek, some say it's the pinnacle of early 2000s American cinema. Others perhaps have issue with the low-grade animation quality. But is there really someone out there who's going to pay an extra $1,480 just for a Shrek watch? Why is it priced in the low four figures? I could not tell you, but I can also tell you that I looked everywhere on the internet for this specific copy of this Shrek game for the Xbox. I could not find it. There are tons of Shrek Super Party out there for the Xbox, but I could not find a single one that included this special watch. When I make video game shop visits, I often get comments asking what I bought at these places. And truth be told, in uh, the recent year, I haven't been buying a lot of video games. And when I went to this book off, unfortunately, there wasn't anything that was screaming at me that I needed to buy it. But I did pick up a book. I picked up this Japanese copy of um, 
is it like Men Without Women? I can't remember what the uh, what the English title is. In Japanese, it's Onna no Inai Otokotachi. It's a Murakami, I think, a compilation of short stories. Uh, one of the stories is actually the foundation for the movie Drive My Car, which uh, took the world by storm a year or two ago. So I picked it up because it was it was five it was five dollars and sixty cents, and I figured, hey, I can probably read this. Uh, and have a good time with it. But aside from a book, I did not pick up any games there. Although if I was in the market, I probably would have picked up some, some of their American GameCube games. Can the book off in New York City replace a book off in Japan? Well, no, not exactly. I think it offers a lot of American games at some pretty competitive prices if you're looking at the newer titles and newer systems. But unfortunately, it just doesn't have the, the stock of older Japanese games, nor newer Japanese games for that matter. And its prices really leave something to be desired in this era where Japanese games are just a couple clicks away from places like Sudugaya or Mandarake or even eBay. However, if you are visiting the book off in New York City, just a couple blocks away across the street from Bryant Park, you can go to a place called Kinokuniya, which is a Japanese bookstore that's pretty prevalent in Japan. And they have a couple of stores here in the United States. And there you can find books about Japan written in English. You can also find English language manga and their Japanese counterparts. And you can find all kinds of cool Japanese stationery, Japanese language learning books there in the basement. It's a really cool store. And because it's so close by, I highly recommend you go there for a visit. Another great place to check out if you're in that Times Square area is to go to Go Go Curry, which has some of the best Japanese curry that I've ever tasted and that I always enjoy going to when I'm in Japan, be it in Tokyo or one of the larger cities there. I want to end with a plug for my Twitch channel. I stream every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv slash jcontra. Sometimes we'll have uh, Japanese game hunting videos and my reaction to them. We'll talk about different topics in Japanese video game collecting, news, and basically whatever's on my mind at the time. Again, that's twitch.tv slash jcontra every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I've been your man out of Japan, jcontra. Thanks for watching and mahalo.